What classic film was referenced most often throughout Breaking Bad? Taxi Driver, The Godfather, Scarface, or The Big Heat? Answer up next. Hi, welcome to Indie Insights. I'm your host, Dirk Norris, president of the New Mexico Film Foundation. And Lauren and Alex are uh, off um, getting juju beans or something, I think. Um, so we're going to take a break, and we're talking with actor, writer, and new director, Lauren Myers. Thanks for being here, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Uh, so we're showing older films, um, and you in particular are kind of fond of the horror uh, genre. Um, what is it about horror that, that attracts you in, in your writing? Mm -hmm. uh, what attracts you about that? Um, I am someone who, uh, as an actor initially, I'm really attracted to things that don't have to be beautiful. Um, I'm attracted to the ugly and the dirty and the gritty, and um, horror is such a wonderful um, genre to explore that with. And it's a genre that um, I think speaks to the inner secrets that we all have that allows us to kind of dabble in that a little bit, which is fun. So if people are watching films that you've written, they have an insight into your psyche? Is that what we're... <laughs> uh, a little bit, perhaps, yes. Um, I, yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> uh, are, are there any particular um, horror films, old, older films that have influenced you? Uh, um, are, are there uh, horror directors that, that kind of get it going for you? Oh, wow. Um, I'm trying to think. I, th I think he's not older, but like Darren Aronofsky, um, he does more like the thrillers, uh -huh. I think. Um, but he's someone that I've definitely um, always just like been struck by, by his work. Um, I think David Fincher as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, once again, not older. Right. Um, but influences, yeah, um, nonetheless. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the things that um, has happened over the years is um, in horror, it's gotten more graphic. Um, in the older movie, Hitchcock was a master at suggestion right. of horror um, and let your mind fill in the rest. And now we've got chainsaws cutting off body parts and blood going everywhere. And uh, Do you have a, a preference um, for one or the other and, and why? Um, I personally like anything that's going to keep the audience just like engaged and on the edge of their seat. And mm. I have found that the less you show and the more you imply, that the more that you've got your audience with you waiting for, waiting for that bomb to go off, waiting for the, the blood to splatter right. compared to seeing it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not right. that I don't mind it, but. Well, <laughs> I, th I think there's been more than one occasion where you've kind of been bathed in blood. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's happened. <laughs> it's just the cleanup process that gets to be addressed. It's drug. fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so acting, um, mm -hmm. writing, and now um, you just did your uh, direct directorial debut with a 48-hour film project, Imagining Vera. Yes. Uh, so how was that experience for you? Wonderful. It was, you know, I went in as a producer as well, um, just wanting to learn. And I learned that assembling your team is half the battle. And I assembled wonderful actors and cinematographer and editors and production designers and sound designers. And it was just lovely to, to make a film in a really, really short <laughs> amount of time. It, it's a huge challenge um, because you have to do everything. You have to write it, you have to yeah. shoot it, you have to edit it, yeah. and you have to turn it in in that 48 hours. Yeah. Um, so what's the advantage? What do you get out of doing something in that compressed time frame? You get a film. First of all, I mean, as an, as an actor. <laughs> Hopefully. <yeah. laughs> Hopefully. I've worked on a lot of projects that just end up on someone's hard drive. Oh. And I'm like, can I have my phone, please? Yeah. Um, and the learning experience of mm -hmm. it. And, um, you know, as someone who only directed theater, never directed film, I learned so much. And I got to work with a fabulous co-producer and writer and uh, watching her whip out this amazing script in like two hours and being able to um, establish this like creative dialogue in a short amount of time. It's like, what can you do thinking on your feet? And 
it was it was awesome. Right, right. So um, a, a lot of independent filmmakers are, are have slash titles, um, uh, writer slash. slash producer slash. Um, whereas you know these older studio films, you were a director. That's what you did, um, and yeah. never the twain shall meet. Uh, do you have a preference? Do you prefer in front of the camera, behind the camera, um, paper I, in hand? <laughs> I think I'm an actor first and foremost, uh -huh. but I think I'm a better actor because of the work I've done as a producer and a director and a writer. And um, I love making art, making filmmaking, theater, and I think that anything that's going to um, challenge me is only going to make the the work in all four of those roles better terrific yeah. really appreciate you being here today Thanks for um, having me. good luck to uh um everything you do in the future <laughs> thank you <laughs> you've been watching indie insights i'm your host dirk norris and we're going right back to the film thanks for watching What classic film was referenced most often throughout Breaking Bad? The answer, The Godfather.